Yo, Elliot, what do you think about the MGTOW movement or men going their own way? Seems like an interesting topic and one that's gaining a lot of popularity. What do you think, Elliot, as a married man about men leaving women behind and going our own way? Yo, Elliot. <laughs> Well, my friend, thank you for that question. And I gotta tell you, man, you opened up a can of worms because I never heard of MGTOW until just a few days ago when I read your question, bro. And I have found a new vein of gold, bro. It's amazing. I didn't realize that what was happening in the world is so prevalent in what's happening in my own soul. And that has everything to do with men going our own way, bro. So yes, I'm about the men going their own way movement. I support it. I say yes to it. I'm about it. I'm facilitating it. That's what Grounding Man is all about this weekend. There will be a bunch of men going our own way. And in this video, I want to answer your question about how I feel, which you already know. You get my thumbs up, MGTOW. Let's go. But I want to go a little bit further because from what I've continued to read and investigate with regard to MGTOW, watching other people's YouTube videos, I found that you guys are just not extreme enough. You're not going far enough, MGTOW. Yes, I agree. Men must go our own way. We must separate from the world of women and government. That's what the whole red pill thing that I'm discovering is all about, too. You guys don't realize that I kind of live under a rock. I don't watch or consume too much media. But I thank you when you share these wonderful new things, happenings with me, and MGTOW's got me juiced up. Now, men going their own way is not actually a new thing. I want to kind of make that clear. It's a remembering. We're coming back. And that's a lot of what's happening in the world right now. It looks like things are breaking down, but really what's happening is we're coming full circle. We're ending one chapter and we're beginning a brand new one. And when you start a brand new chapter, the things that you started with, men going their own way, start to come back. Something our ancestors knew about men, young men, and going our own way. Both men and women understood this about men needing to go their own way and they collaborated together, both the matriarchs and the patriarchs, when young men in particular needed to go their own way. And what they would do is create a situation where the older men, the wise men, the fathers, the grandfathers, the uncles, the elders, the mentors would Recognize a young man who needs to be separated from the world of matter, mother, when he began to get lost. And that typically happens when we end one cycle as an individual and move into another cycle. And that's usually around the age of 12. So 12 to 14 or so, our ancestors began to recognize in a young man, both men and women, once again, that that boy's got to get the fuck up out of here, out of the world of the mother. This is a term that I learned from reading Iron John, where he speaks, of, he speaks about, this is uh, Robert Bly, speaks about the fundamentals of male initiation. And although there are many different motifs, there's one that is ever present, that's cross-cultural, and that is this. Separation from the world of the mother and atonement with the world of the father. So separation from women, separation from the world, separation from the mother, separation from matter, because that's where the root word material comes from. The word maternity comes from, the word mother comes from, is essential for men to find ourselves. We must separate ourselves from the world of matter. Our ancestors knew this. And women, mother, is a metaphor, is a symbol for matter. That's why the earth is considered feminine. Matter, material, the maya, is only one part of our existence, is only one part of our experience, let me put it that way, as a human being. There is the second half, but we've been so mind-fucked, we've been so attached to the material world, materialism, money, women, earth, sensation, sensationalism, sex, all these things, very 
physical. They're of the world of the mother, of the world of the mother. Right now we're having a backlash. That's what Mad Town's all about. I like to call it Man Town. That's the way I thought of it when I heard it. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, Man Town. Man Town gets it halfway. We must separate from the world of the mother, but for one reason and one reason only. So that we can atone and follow the way of the father, the pattern, the paternity. That's where the word paternity comes from also too. Mother, matter, material, father, paternity, pattern. Something that we know about patterns is that they're not really, sent in really material. Patterns are like blueprints. Patterns are spiritual. They're ideas, ideologies, stories, religion. Meaning, ideas all come from the world of the Father. That's why they point to the Father up there, from the eternal Father. So now I just raised up our conversation, Magtows. Follow me, because I'm raising it up. I'm with you. But we got to get out of the illusion completely with regard to the fact that it's man and woman. Because it's not. It's about matter and pattern. It's about the material world and the spiritual world. It's about rising up out of duality. When many magtows go on their quest, it's out of bitterness. It's out of anger and hatred and pain, guilt, shame, with regard to how the material world, the matter world, the mother world, women represent the enslavement that we've been subjected to for so many generations. Yes, be mad, I get it. But you don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. You don't want to throw out women as an emblem for what is actually going on in the big picture when we rise up out of it. It's not about women. And I can tell you this, those of you guys who think that you're magtiles but you're not because you reject women and then you go and chase money. I was reading some of the blog posts. You reject women and go chase money, you're chasing the same fucking thing. It's all the material world. When you reject women and you chase money, you've just, I mean, it's kind of a, it's a bad bet there because women are much more sensual than that piece of paper. You're going to reject one or the other, reject the money, right? But really what I'm asking you to do is not to reject money or to reject women, but to rise up out of it, rise up out of the duality, create separation from the world of matter so that we can be available to go in and go up to the world of pattern, to the world of spirit, to the world of the Father. So much I wanna say about this topic. There are so many different things to uh, explore here. This is a rich gold mine, and that's why I'm so excited about this question. I've been talking to my friends all week about it since I heard your question, my friend. And so I've got so much that I'm trying my best to temper here and give you the fundamentals, the basics, right? I wanna be a part of your movement, Magtows. So let me support the movement here with some ideas that might move it forward. Separation from the world of the mother, yes, very good. We must rise up and recognize that it's all matter. That's why monks stepped out of relationships. They don't get married. I hear you guys talking about not getting married. Yeah, that's why monks didn't get married. That's why the religious men, the spiritual men, the shamans did not have women. They did not get involved because they were living in the world of pattern, paternity, the father's world, the spiritual world. It's a good thing. But when we separate from the world of the matter, the material, we're not actually getting away from the total feminine or from the feminine completely. Because what happens also too is we get to learn how to appreciate and cultivate the woman inside each and every one of us. That's why the religious men stepped away from the world, stepped away from women, so that they can increase their own intuition and their own creative capacity. Women already got it. They come here inherently as creators. Men, and it's very obvious and it's very rudimentary, it's very sow-like, cow-like women's creativity because, I mean, my wife breastfed all our kids. She would even say, yeah, I'm a cow again. That's the ugly side of the woman that we're wanting to not We 
when we project our femininity on a woman, what we're really doing and our beauty, what we think is beautiful out there with regard to a woman, what, and when we love that woman, when we're attracted to that woman, we gotta understand that that love, that sensation is in us first. You can't love that woman, you can't see that beauty, you can't see beauty outside yourself unless you have it inside you. The problem then goes with the grasping and the wanting and the needing of that woman. And then the resent and the remorse and the regret and the anger associated with finding out that she's a sow. She's a cow. She's just a flesh and bone beast like you and me. It's the divine woman that we're projecting upon her. The, the potential woman, the ideological woman that we're projecting on her. And she can't have it unless we give it to her. Do you understand that? So the love is in you. The anima, as Carl Jung would call it, is in you. When we look outside of ourselves for anything, be it the woman or the wealth, we give our power away. And then it becomes very easy to have icky feelings towards those things that we give our power away to. Icky feelings towards women. Oh, I, we, not knowing that we gave them their power, but when they throw it back in our face, we feel all dejected, rejected, and want to point fingers, not realizing I gave her my power. And those of you guys who are angry about the government and their position with regard to uh, how men are treated in the breakup of families, you got to understand that too. You got to understand that that's okay too. You can't fight the government also too. And I don't say that because they're stronger than you. I say it because it's a fucking waste. It's like trying to kick women out of your life. It's a waste. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to go nowhere. When it comes to the government, when it comes to women, take the advice of Master Christ, Jesus, yeah. He's got something real important to say about that. One of his disciples comes to him and says, hey Jesus, I know you want us to follow us and do all this spiritual shit, follow your father, because Jesus was a gangster, he was initiating us. You want us to follow your father, follow the pattern, follow the God, but uh, Caesar over here wants my money. I gotta make money because he's gotta pay, I gotta pay taxes. You know what Jesus told him? He picked up the coin and he showed the picture of the face on that coin to his disciple and said, whose face is that? Right? Think Americans, whose face is on our dollar? Think world, whose face is on your dollar? And he says, bro, Caesar's face is on this dollar, on this coin. Give Caesar what's his. Give the world what's his. Give the government what's theirs. Give women what they're attached to. And give me your heart. Give me what's mine. Right? When Jesus says, give me what's mine, and he's speaking for the Father, he's saying, let go of all that shit completely. Completely let it go. You guys who are mad cows, who are mad at women, but still out there hustling and, and bustling and trying to make that money and being attached to that, all you did was switch drugs. You're addicted to another thing of the same magnitude. It's the same, only I say it's worse, because money ain't gonna fuck you. Money ain't gonna cook you. Well, you can hire a cook. But you get where I'm going. Money, money, money is... Not warm like a woman. <laughs> so, where am I here now? Separation from the world of the mother. Seeing women for what they really are and seeing men for what we are, really are, which are animals. When we show up and we incarnate here, women have nipples for nursing like sows. And men, we're no better. We're pretty nasty too. In fact, in the same way that our ancestors related the physical part of the woman, and I'm pulling this from Iron John also too, as he relates to the Celtic traditions, women, there are two parts, men, there are two parts. This is, and this is fundamental human being stuff. So yin yang, everything is yin yang. Everything is male, female. The part of the woman that we tend to overlook and not see is that she's a beast. And we project the beautiful part on her, knowing that that's a pattern, that's in you. That love, there is no, you can't, you can't pick that love up and touch it, it's in you. It's a vibration inside you, it's an energy inside you. And men, snakes, baby, that's how we're represented. Snakes. And we're told instantly not to trust women and not to trust snakes when we read the Bible. Depends on how you interpret it. The snake, 
the snake, he's the one that, and the woman, they're the ones that got us in this sinful place to begin with. They're all trouble. But now you're alienated, men. We're alienated when we alienate ourselves from women, and we're alienated when we alienate our and they alienate ourselves from our own animal, our own instinct, our own wisdom, our own serpent, snake. Kundalini energy rises up the spine. You know where the spine begins? At the base. Spinal cord, reptilian brain, Abdullah Mangada. <laughs> Abdullah Ablongada. The reptilian part of the brain, the brain stem our own intuition, our own knowing. The snake has always been a symbol for wisdom, right? Why do you think in the Egyptian gods, they got, some of them got snakes up on top of their head, those dudes? Because there's something powerful about our animal nature too, not just the women, they give birth. They give birth just like cows and sows. But men, snakes, what do snakes do? Snakes shed their skin, snakes, keep their belly close to the ground so they can sense the vibrations of what's going on. Then they lift themselves up and they could smell with their tongues. When snakes are smelling with their tongues, it's almost like when we receive downloads of consciousness from the Father above. Intuition, he speaks into our heart. Atonement with the Father is step two, if you're following me. So we separate from the world of the mother mad cows. Yes, man town. Do it. Righteous. It's true. We've been doing it for generations and we should bring it back. I'm bringing it back. That's what we're doing here at Grounding Camp, like I said. We're all bringing it back. This is the right time. This is why I'm so excited about it, man. This is the greatest time to be alive. These movements make sense. Separation is good, but atonement brings wholeness. And what we're really wanting is a connection to our fathers, both physical father and metaphysical father. The pattern above, the paternity above, the blueprint from above, that eternal blueprint and our individual blueprint as we get here, knowing our truth, knowing our sovereignty, being sovereign over our lives like kings, getting back in touch with that. But it's going to be a long, hard road because if we stay focused on the material, we stay focused on the matter, we stay focused on our even rejection of the polarity of matter, what we do in Mad Cow, we're going to miss because we're going to look at our fathers and we're going to say, fuck him. Many of us don't have fathers. And those of us who do have fathers, we have estranged relationships with him. Because as you red pillars so rightfully know, the world has been ordered in such a way right now that fathers have no value. And the reason why fathers have no value is because fathers are not in the home anymore. I believe it was Hitler that once said the easiest way to control the people is to remove fathers from the home and make the women and children dependent on the state. This is a complete mind fuck that we've all fell for. While you're out there getting and grinding and, and stacking, know that you're worshiping that system. Know that you're worshiping material. Know that you haven't separated yourself from matter or the world of mother anymore. All you're chasing women with big tits and money is you wanting more breast from mommy, more milk from mommy. You gotta grow the fuck up, let that shit alone, and go to the world of the father, the world of the snake, the world of the pattern, the world of sovereignty and the inner king. What does that look like? What does that look like? It's so mysterious, the world of the father. The world of the mother is very simple. It's here, we can see it, we can touch it, we could smell it, we could fuck it. But the world of the father, much more mysterious, not really here. Think of your father, absent fathers, quiet fathers, atonement with the father. This is a very complex topic with many different ways to approach it. And I'm doing my best here. But what we are asking for, wanting deeply, is a reconnection to meaning. Meaning is spiritual. 
Meaning or what we make sacred has everything to do with the choice we make to make it sacred. Nothing in the profane world is sacred unless we make it so. And we're wanting more sacredness, sacred father, stories, mythology, religion. That's what religion really is. Those who are religious and attached to the book of laws, attached to the book, attached to the gurus, attached to the teacher, attached to the master, attached to Jesus, miss real religion, religing has to do with unifying with the eternal pattern, father, paternity within us. That's why monks of old went on their own. Men, we do stand alone in this world. We do have sovereign power in this world, but we've been tricked and we've been duped and we've given our power away. A big part of taking our power back, and when I say power, I am not talking in terms of dick power or manpower. I'm talking about the fully integrated masculine feminine Tender, aggressive, king, warrior, magician, lover. That's available in every single man. It's not about separation. Magtow, I get it. Separation is one part of the deal, but integration is its purpose. You break eggs so you can make an omelet, so you can make something better. So separation is good so that reintegration is better. Men, when we reintegrate our feminine within, We'll stop giving our power away to the Maya or the image of beauty on the outside because it'll be here. Not only that, men, when we get back in touch with our instinct, like a snake, our intuition, the female version of that. Intuition is very receptive. Intuition is very dark. Intuition is very subjective. We live in a world that loves objectivity, love object relationships. That's very feminine. All you scientists out there who want facts and want to be able to measure everything, you're, you're, you're feminists. You're attached to the material. That's very feminine, that's very matter. Matter of fact. No, oh, men, we come from, and we draw our power from the energy of above, the spiritual energy. That's why there are so many fantastic creations made by men. We build rocket ships, bridges, technology, empires, because we dream this shit up. Women don't have to dream creation. They just make it. We give, look, check this out. We give women our essence, right? That's one of the terms used for your nut. Right? When you jizz and when you give a woman your sperm, you gave her your essence. Think about that word essence. Right? What's in a seed? The essence, the potential. Men, we live in the world of potentialities. Why be stuck on facts and material? Why be stuck on taxes and women? The world of infinite potential. Limitless possibilities lies in our grasp, men. And it begins with the stories we tell ourselves about the things we see in the material world. We've thrown out the stories that men have told one another for initiation and meaning for many, many, many generations with the scientific age. It's one of those throwing the babies out with the bathwater once again. Part of this, part of this pussification process, all that. Throwing out religion is pussy. That's pussification because you're attached to the material and you're not willing to work in the metaphysical, the spiritual, the religious, the pattern, the father. You get it? So I'm not vying for the return of religion of old. But there are some elements there that will help us as we craft new stories for our new generation. I have a few that are very helpful that come from the work of Carl Jung that I like to share. 
I also have some very grounded approaches associated with taking back our warrior power. That comes from the world of Wilhelm Reich. The ideological world of Carl Jung tells us that we are like a diamond, if you will. A diamond that has four sides or like a pyramid. But the reason why it's a diamond is because the pyramid, the construct of the ego according to, or the, of the psyche according to Jung, is quadrated, four parts, but then also mirrored. King, warrior, magician, lover, and then queen, warrior, magician, lover. Every man has a queen, every man has an anima. That's what he said also too, anima, animas. And then the four parts, the quadrated psyche. The stories that are associated with that ideology are timeless, like the stories of kings, sovereign men, the story of warriors, young, hot-blooded, thrill-seekers, crushing and creating worlds. Ah, also too, but the lover, the intuitive, the sensual, the appreciative capacity that's available to all of us. Watch how Jesus appreciates the birds and the flowers. Appreciation is very lover-like, feminine, heart-like. We get to get that back too, men. We're not just cogs in a system. We're not just shiny swords. They say white knights. Yeah, white knight, clean slate. You gotta get some blood on you like a warrior and smear that in and love it and lick it like a lover in all your sensuality. And then as we gain wisdom, as we learn from one another, as we build our man town and come together and support one another and teach one another, our magician grows, our intellect goes, our intu intuition grows. Stories about our inner king, warrior, magician, lover. Stories about the garden, our inner feminine. Trusting our intuition and in things we can't see, all very masculine. Putting down the neurotic sword of doing and picking up the scepter of being, men. We've been tricked by the material world, the world of the mother, into believing that our value comes from what we can produce, what we can do. And as men, because particularly young men, because we've got all that doing power in us, if they show us a road, we're going to go. I'll pay for your college and give you $20,000 a year if you pick up this gun and go shoot brown people on the other side of the planet that didn't do shit to you. Tyranny from above. We don't have the kings up top. Got dark wizards up there giving our warriors negative things to do and then casting them out into the street before they can actually integrate the trauma associated with being a manipulated warrior. So, in conclusion, or I'm going to start heading towards conclusion. Yes, MGTOW, Mantown, let's do this. But we got to go further, and I think we can do it better. And I think it's going to be an integration where we don't reject women, but we learn to love our own feminine. Women got their issues too. And I can tell you this about women and their women's empowerment movement right now, they're picking up their swords because we put ours down, our inner swords. Just because you pick up a gun and go shoot people in Iraq doesn't make you a warrior. When you can say no, like women are saying no with their Me Too movement. No, I won't. No, you can't make me. Then we become warriors once again. Women are doing that because we are not. And I will tell you this as far as metaphor and our ancestors understood that the world around us is a mirror reflection of our consciousness and the cosmos is a metaphor for everything we experience, women reflect like the moon. Men shine like the sun. That's why Jesus is the sun. The sun is masculine. The, 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 the reflection of the sun is feminine. What we see in the female that we don't like, it's because we are casting a fucked up light. 
If you don't like what you see in women these days, it's because it's our fault. We're the suns. We're shining on it. That's like the sun looking at the moon and saying, ugh, you ugly bitch. That's your reflection, bro. They're our reflection. So in man town, we will have women. Because women will be there to show us our truth when we're standing in it. And then they're going to pick up their swords when we get weak, like they're doing right now. In Mantown, I see it like this. This is my prophecy for Mantown. That women will gain the power associated with choosing the men that lead. We don't need women acting like men in the new world or in any world. But when men don't act like men, women have to nut up and do it, and that's what we see. But when women can trust men because men own themselves, because men have taken back their power from tyranny. Because men love the female inside them. They love the feminine inside them. Women can trust them. Because they're not just conditioned autonomon robots going out there doing what they're told by corporations and governments. We'll have our intuition and our sensing. We lead. We're the sons and women. We love to reflect our glory. We would love to have them around. And you magtows who are attached to women looking a certain way, because I've seen some of the videos where you're saying women are supposed to look a certain way, have a thin waist and be pretty and feminine, you're retarded. You're still looking outside for the beauty that you want to embrace within you. Women won't be subjected to the bullshit tyranny that causes them to need to look and be a certain way either. This is about all of us taking our power back. Women won't be valued just for the way they look. What a cheap, superficial way to be about things. We will love women because of all of them, even their masculine parts. Even their sourness, that's what makes them so beautiful. I say that word sour with, with, with tender love and eroticism in my voice. Mm hmm Filling yourself up with masculine seed and power, reflecting, and then nurturing the physical creation by being home with our children, both men and women, fathers and mothers. The world has gone so fucking topsy-turvy that women are out there in the workforce and men are out there in the workforce and the children, like Hitler said, are being taught by the government, are being taught by media. We will come home to small communities in Mantown. We will love our women, all parts of them in Mantown, and they will love us. And order will be restored and children will be happy. they'll have a mommy and daddy. The most fundamental basic thing for the existence. It's all yin and yang. So I'm sure I'm not going to end here with this video. There will be more. And I'm fascinated to hear what you guys think about this video, Magtow, Red Pill, and all these things that are emerging justifiably and rightfully so. A lot of them labeled as right wing. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's right. Done.